In this video, I will show you how to create, use and benchmark a RAM disk on Linux. And I will also explain the difference between two RAM disk implementations, RAMFS and TempFS. A RAM disk is basically a file system inside your existing RAM. The benefit of using it is that every file access is extremely fast in comparison to an SSD or hard disk. The drawback is that the memory will be resetted every time you reset your machine because it is inside RAM. So if you don't copy the files over to an SSD or hard disk, the files will be lost. RAM disks are usually used for inter-process communication, where processes are communicating with each other through those files inside the RAM disk in a fast and efficient way. This is true for Linux and Unix operating systems, but not so much for Windows, where RAM disks are more of an exotic feature and not used that much. Another use case would be if you want to improve performance of different programs, especially if the programs are reading and writing many files to the disk. Moving those files to a RAM disk can significantly improve performance of such programs, especially if the files are huge. Now before we start creating a RAM disk on Linux, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. The Linux distro that we will use in this video is actually running on WSL. I have WSL running and it is Ubuntu 22.04. And thanks to the WSLG feature, we can also see the Nautilus file manager here running in WSL as well. Now it doesn't really matter that all of this is running in WSL, everything that I will show you should also work in a regular Ubuntu distro. RAM disks are very common on Linux and you actually get a few out of the box on every Linux distro. To show the mounted RAM disks, write df is the command, then dash ah capital T, then dash t ramfs and dash t tmpfs. RAMFS and TEMPFS are two types of RAM disks on Linux and I want to list those, so let's execute. Most of Linux distros, if not all of them, have pre-mounted RAM disks by default. What you can see here is now a list of RAM disks that are mounted on my Linux distro. Most of those are of type TEMPFS, but there is also one RAMFS inside here. Usually what you will find is that everything that is inside the slash run folder is actually inside a RAM disk. Here we can see that the run folder has a maximum size of 2 GB, of which 2.5 MB are allocated. Let's find the folder in the file manager. Here it is. All the files and folders that you can see here inside the run folder are actually inside the RAM disk inside RAM. Inside here we also have two special folders. The first one is lock, which is mounted separately here, as you can see. This one is used to synchronize access to different files, like for instance to signal to other processes that a certain file is locked, which is again just another file or folder in here. And the second special folder is the SHM folder, which is also a separate RAM disk, as you can see here. On Ubuntu, this one is basically the same as the dev shm folder. Probably because of compatibility reasons, this one was just moved and linked here. But basically you can put in whatever you want. It's for general purpose use. And currently it's empty. Now let's see this in action. I will open another window. And run htop here. Currently my Ubuntu is using around 600 megabytes. And here you can also see an interesting point. The RAM disk size that you can see here is actually the maximum size that can be allocated. And it's not allocated right away. The only thing that is allocated is under the used column. If you want, you can also change the maximum size. For instance, let's say I want to change the run SHM size to 500 megabytes, then write sudo mount dash o remount and set the size to 500 megabytes of slash run slash shm execute and let's check and the maximum size is now set to 500 megabytes 
which is also true for dev SHM because those are the same. If you instead want to set it to full RAM size, then write instead of 500 megabytes, 100%. Let's try it out and let's check. The maximum size is now 3.9 gigabytes, which is the maximum that I have available. I will set it back to 500 megabytes. If you instead want to create a new RAM disk, then first create a new folder. I will call it RAM disk and then sudo mount t and we will use a tempfs here. Set the size, which in my case will be 500 megabytes. You can also set the access mode. 777 means free access for all users. Then again, tmpfs and the folder where we want to mount it. Execute. Let's check again. And here it is, the last one. Now to unmount it, sudo u mount and the path to the RAM disk. And now it's gone. Let's clear the terminal. Now let's say we want to store a file of 100 megabytes to a RAM disk. So I will generate a random file of 100 megabytes by the name test1 inside the slash run slash shm folder. Currently 600 megabytes of RAM is used. And if we create the file, the file is created. And now we are using 700 megabytes of RAM. Now if we remove the file, the file is removed and we are back to 600 megabytes used. So the 100 megabytes of RAM are now free again. If we try to allocate more than the maximum size of 500 megabytes, let's say 600 megabytes and execute, we get an error that no space is left on the device. It only allocated 500 megabytes, which is the maximum of this RAM disk that was previously set. Let's check that. 500 megabytes is the maximum size, 500 is used and zero available. So once you reach 100%, you cannot allocate more. Again, here we can see that more than a gigabyte of RAM is used. Let's again remove the file and we are back to 600 megabytes. This is not the first time I used a RAM disk on Linux. In a previous video, I used a tempfs RAM disk to run full Ubuntu from RAM only. So if you want to run full Ubuntu with no hard drive latency yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. So far, everything I showed you is specific for the tempfs RAM disk, but there is also a different one, a RAMFS RAM disk, which behaves similar, but a bit different. Now let's see what the differences are between RAMFS and tempfs. I will clear the terminal. Now I will create a RAM disk of type RAMFS. The command is the same as we used previously for the tempfs RAM disk. So let's create this one. RAM disk is mounted. Let's check it. Here it is, RAMFS. As you can see, the RAMFS size is set to zero. This is because RAMFS is extended dynamically as we add files to it. And there is one key difference in comparison to tempfs, ramfs has no maximum limit. That means that it will always allocate as much as it needs until your RAM is full. So in case of ramfs, the size parameter is basically ignored. And that also means that if we create a file, this time inside the ramfs folder, and we set the size to 600 megabytes, it should actually create it. So let's open the folder, here it is. It's currently empty. We are now using about 560 megabytes. And now if we create the file, finished. And as you can see, the file is created, 600 megabytes. But if we check the RAM usage, we are still at 560 megabytes. The only thing that changed is actually this yellow bar here, which got bigger. So it is actually allocated as a sort of cache. If we check again the terminal, it still says that the size is zero. Let's now delete the file. The file is gone and also the yellow bar is smaller. Now instead of htop, I will close it. I will run a different system monitor called btop. This is how it looks like. And I will change the preset by pressing P. This is what I want to see. So this time it says that we are using 777 megabytes. And now I will create the file again. 600 megabytes, done, the file is here. 
And now this time, BTOP is showing it correctly, we are using 1.34 gigabytes. So obviously HTOP is not showing the RAMFS part, but thankfully BTOP is. Now let's remove the file. The file is now gone, and we are back at 780 megabytes. Another difference between TempFS and RAMFS is that TempFS, if it needs to, it will swap. And probably because of swapping is TempFS used more frequently, but there is still one difference that we need to evaluate, and that's speed. So let's benchmark those. The performance analyzer that I will use in this video is called KDiskMark. I am now here on the official GitHub page, and this one looks very much like the Crystal Disk Mark on Windows. So if you scroll down, down here you will find the installation instructions. I'm using Ubuntu, down here are the commands. So let's copy this one, and let's paste it here. Perfect. Now sudo apt update, sudo apt install kdiskmark. It was already installed on my system. Now I will run it as sudo, sudo kdiskmark. Here it is. First I will run it on my root directory. I will leave the default settings and run. Finished. Now those are the results for my WSL system that is stored on an SSD. The results seem a bit low, but that's probably because it's virtualized on Windows. I will use this as a benchmark. So let's take a snapshot. That's it. Now I will run kdiskmark on my tempfs RAM disk, which is run shm, same settings, and run. Finished. And as you can see, the RAM disk is almost 10 times faster in every test case in comparison to the root file system. Sometimes it's just insane how fast the RAM can be. Let's screenshot that. Now let's make the same test with RAMFS. Here it is. And it crashed. Out of the box, KDisk Mark doesn't work for RAMFS, so we need to trick it. Let's unmount the RAMFS disk. And now let's run KDisk Mark. Find the folder. This is it. Now it can select the folder because the RAM disk is not mounted yet. Now let's mount it. RAMFS, same folder. KDisk mark is still there, so now it should work. Same settings and run. Finished, and here are the results. Now as you can see, RAMFS and TempFS perform basically the same. There is not much difference between those two but both of those perform exceptionally better than my root file system in WSL. Personally, I would always choose tempfs over ramfs. As we saw, some programs can't handle ramfs properly or they just crash. Ramfs also doesn't swap, which is not so great. The only use case that I could think of where I would use ramfs is maybe if you want to extend your physical ram while your system is running because RAMFS is always extended dynamically, but I'm not sure if extending the physical RAM at runtime is even a thing. So in my opinion, the TempFS RAM disk is the winner here. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get, and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much, and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. Now, as I said, the RAM disks are mostly used on Linux and Unix operating systems, but in a previous video, I also showed you how you can create, run, and benchmark a RAM disk on Windows. So if you want to use a RAM disk on Windows yourself and boost performance, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.